Hi friends, welcome. My name's Miss Heather and I'm so happy that you've joined me for the Arcola ARC Sunday School at Home. So today we're going to talk all about how God helps us to be brave. But before we do that, we are going to start with a song. So stand up and get ready to sing along. To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in praise And I want to be thankful I want to be grateful I want to remember everything To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in Well, great job singing, everybody. So today, our Bible point is God helps us to be brave. That's our Bible point. And so every time you hear me say, God helps us be brave, you're going to put your hands on your hips in your best superhero poised position and say, we're brave. All right, let's try it. God helps us be brave. We're brave. One more time. God helps us be brave. We're brave. All right, great job. Well, we have a new Bible memory buddy for uh, this month, and her name is Rockette. She is a flying squirrel. So I'm curious, how much do you actually know about flying squirrels? Hmm, I've got a this or that challenge. So do you think that flying squirrels have big ears or big eyes. Hmm. If you think they have big ears, cup your ears like this when I count to three. If you think they have big eyes, I want you to open your eyes up as wide as you possibly can. Okay, get ready to vote. One, two, three. Did you vote? Well, flying squirrels have big eyes. That's right. All right, well, let's check out this video from Rockette to learn a little bit more. Hi, friends. I'm Rockette. I'm a flying squirrel. I'm so excited to see you today. Look closely at me. Do you notice anything? <laughs> You guessed it, I have the most beautiful big eyes, <laughs> if I do say so myself. A lot of young animals have very large, cute eyes like mine. That's one reason everybody thinks babies are so adorable. But here's something you might not know. We flying squirrels never outgrow our big, beautiful eyes. We have them from the time we're born until we're old and gray. 
Since we're such small creatures, you might wonder why God gave us such big eyes. Well, God made everything on purpose, so he had the perfect reason. Flying squirrels like me are most active at night. Have you ever tried finding your way around at night? <laughs> it's not so easy. And since we're flying squirrels, we glide from tree to tree at night. So we need to be able to see where we're going. That way, we won't crash and fall. Whee! It'd almost be impossible and very scary to fly at night without being able to see. In fact, I think it might ground us flying squirrels. But God knew that in order to be the high flyers we are, we need to gather more light with our big eyes. Our night vision helps us be brave when venturing out at night. In the Bible, a man named Caleb bravely ventured out to scout out some land. God had promised to give this land to his people, the Israelites. Caleb and the other scouts brought back big, beautiful fruit to show Moses and the Israelites what a wonderful home it'd be. Some of the other people were nervous about moving into the land. They weren't so sure about it. But Caleb knew that God's promises come true, and he trusted that God would come through for the Israelites. In the Bible book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9, it says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God will help you be brave no matter where you are or what's going on around you. I know it's not always easy to be strong and courageous when you feel scared or worried. But God has promised you something too. He'll always be with you. So trust God. God will give you the strength you need. Remember this, I'm just a tiny squirrel and God gave me what I need to be brave when I'm gliding through the night skies. If God takes care of me, he'll definitely take care of you. He loves you and all people so much. No matter what's happening around you, remember this, God helps us be brave. Well, gotta glide away. I'll see you later, friends. Well, I don't know about you. Squirrels are not my favorite animal, but they really can fly. Wasn't that cool? All right, well, this is our Bible memory verse for this week. And it is coming from the Bible. God's true story of love. And our verse this week is coming from Joshua 1, 9. So I'm going to say a line and then you repeat after me. All right, get ready. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Great job. All right. Well, let's sing about that. Uh, this next song is called No Matter What I'm Facing. So stand up and get ready to sing along. Woke up this morning feeling kind of blue A little sad but I know just what to do Oh, 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 oh I have learned that I can go to Jesus He lifts me up
I really think that looked like fun, don't you? <laughs> All right. Well, today's Bible story is kind of an exciting one, and I'm going to need your help to tell it. So I'm guessing you know what a thumbs up and a thumbs down look like. So let me see your thumbs up. Awesome. Let me see your thumbs down. Okay. So today you're going to be giving thumbs up or thumbs down about what you're hearing in the story. So let's practice. I'm going to ask you a question and you give me a thumbs up if you like it, a thumbs up if you don't, or you don't think it's a great idea. So let's say, uh, do you like pizza? I love pizza. Um, did you brush your teeth today? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Um, do you like Brussels sprouts? I like them, but some people don't. Um, let's see. Did you do something nice for your mom this week? All right. Okay, well, let's get ready for our story. So we have God's people, the Israelites. You see them here in this picture. Remember, Moses was their leader, and he's leading them out of Egypt, where they were slaves, into this promised land that God has, has provided. So they get to the edge, they're out in the desert, they're wandering around, they get to the edge of where this promised land is supposed to be, and they're curious about what, uh, you know, might be there. So Moses decides to come up with a plan to send some spies out to check out this promised land. Now, they were going to send 12 spies. God told Moses, send 12 spies out into the land to check it out. Hmm, do you think sending spies is a good idea or not? Well, what do you think? What do you think? What about the number of spies? Do you think 12 is enough? Is it too many? What do you think about that? Give me a thumbs up what do you, if you think it's a good idea. A thumbs up if you think 12 is good. You know, maybe it's not so good. Maybe it's too many. Maybe it's not enough. Well, Let's see, you know, God has really not steered us wrong yet. So we're going to go with it. And Moses agrees and he sends out the 12 spies. So we're going to read from the book of Numbers today to hear more about this story. So this is Numbers chapter 13, verses 19 and 20. This is Moses's instructions to the spies. Be sure to remember how many people live there, how strong they are, and if they live in open towns or walled cities. See if the land is good for growing crops and find out what kind of trees grow there. It's time for grapes to ripen, so try to bring back some of the fruit that grows there. Hmm, so Moses wants the spies to go not only check out the situation, but bring back fruit to see what kind of crops they could grow. Do you think getting all that information is a good idea or a bad idea? I guess we'll see. So the spies are going to get ready to sneak in and explore. But you guys don't really look a lot like spies to me. Are you good spies? Do you think that you could be sneaky and sneak across the room that you're in right now? So I'm going to give you the count of three, and I want you to sneak over to the side of your room in your best spy sneakiness. Ready? One, two, three. Sneak over there. Sneak, sneak. Awesome. 
I don't know. I think you can be sneakier. Can you sneak back to your seat? Sneak back. Awesome. All right. Well, I think you'll be okay as spies. So the spies sneaked into the new land and they were gone for a long time, quite a while. In fact, they were gone one week, two weeks, three weeks. The people were thinking they weren't coming back. Do you think they're going to come back? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Well, they weren't goners. They did come back. The spies were gone for a long time, 40 days. But they did come back. Glad to hear that they were okay. After all that time, they came back with some good news and some bad news. Let's hear the good news first. Give me a thumbs up. All right, good news. Here we go. This is from the book of Numbers again. Then he showed them the fruit and he said, look at this fruit. The land we explored is rich with milk and honey. Oftentimes you hear that whenever there is so much abundance, there's so much plenty somewhere uh, for the people. So it's awesome. The crops are fantastic. They've got huge grapes. Look at that size of that bundle of grapes there. That's massive. There are figs and pomegranates. There's, you know, two people carrying that bunch of grapes. That's huge. So the potential to grow crops is great. They've got some good food. That means they're going to have things to eat. They say it's flowing with milk and honey. Sounds like a pretty great place, right? So one of the Caleb's, his name was... One of the spies, his name was Caleb, said, let's go at once. We can take the land and we'll certainly conquer it. What do you think? Should they take the land? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Hmm. Well, the spies' news sounded pretty good, right? Uh, but that wasn't all there was to the report. Let's listen for some more spy news. So I'm going to read you from, uh, again, from Numbers. But the other men replied, those people are much too strong for us. Then they started spreading rumors and saying, we won't be able to grow anything in that soil. And the people are like giants. In fact, we saw the Nephilim, who are the ancestors of the Anakim. They were so big that we felt as small as grasshoppers. Hmm. So there's a lot of people that already live there. They're in walled cities. It's pretty fortified. And the grapes aren't the only big thing in the land, right? It sounds like there's giants. I don't think they were giants, but they were really big people, right? So, hmm, if they made them feel as small as teeny tiny grasshoppers, think about a grasshopper if it's in your hand. If that's how you felt as a human being, you know, these people must be really big. All right. So I'm thinking there's a bunch of people living in this new land. They're not going to be thrilled to have these Israelites come in and take over, right? What do you think? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yep. So 10 of the 12 spies thought that it was a bad idea to go take the land, that there was no way that this was a good, good plan. They said, we can't go against those people. They're stronger than we are. And so... The rest of the Israelites agreed with those 10 spies. And so they were afraid and they didn't trust God. Hmm. Show me a big time, two-fisted, double thumbs down. They did not trust God. But two of those spies, Caleb and Joshua, they didn't think that way. Despite what everyone else said, they believed God. They trusted God that he was going to provide this promised land to the people. And that he would get them there no matter what. So huge thumbs up for Caleb and Joshua, right? Now, you know, what those spies did report was true. There were lots of tribes that lived there. They were strong and they lived in walled cities. They were large people and big warriors, right? But God had promised this land to his people. So the real questions the Israelites had to answer was, do we trust God to be faithful and keep his promise to us? Turns out the Israelites did not choose God. They didn't choose to trust him. They ignored Caleb and Joshua and God wasn't too happy about it. In fact, God said that, that current of that current generation, only Caleb and Joshua would be allowed to enter the promised land. So everyone else who was at least 20 years old 
would end up dying before God's people were going to be allowed into that promised land. In the meantime, they're going to have to wander the desert in the wilderness. So that's like 40 more years in the desert wandering around without that promised land. That's one year for every day those spies were gone. Hmm. Well, that's where we're going to leave the story today with the Israelites heading back out into the wilderness, having to wait to enter that promised land. So I want to hear what you think about this story. Do you give it a thumbs up, a thumbs down? I'm sure there's been a time in your life where it was hard for you to trust God. That happens to everybody. But the good news is, is that God helps us be brave. We're brave. We don't have to rely on our own understanding. We can choose to trust God instead. So I have a fun experiment for you. Now in your take home pack, you should have a flyer and any piece of paper will work. What I want you to do is roll it up into a tube, okay? So pretend like you're a spy and this is your binoculars. Got it? All right, so you've got your tube. I want you to take your hand and put it right here beside your tube like this, okay? And put your tube up to one eye and look straight ahead with both eyes. Do you see a hole in your hand? You may have to move your hand around, but focus straight ahead and it will appear as though you have a hole in your hand. Pretty cool. So one of your eyes sees your hand. The other one sees the hole that you made with the piece of paper. So your eyes and your brain are seeing two different things and your brain doesn't know what to do with that. So it winds up seeing a hole in your hand, right? But there's not really a hole in your hand. Your hand doesn't have any holes. So it's not true. So when we focus on fear, instead of focusing on God, we don't get an accurate picture of a situation right? Just like we're focusing here, it's not an accurate picture that there was a hole in your hand. But if we focus on the truth that God is with us and he will help us, God helps us to be brave, we're brave, we're going to have a much better experience. We can trust that God's way is always the best way. All right, so I would like to skip over here to our friendship finale. I'm going to stop my sharing my screen. Hi guys. So remember Rocket, our friendship, uh, our Bible memory bunny. Rocket can help us remember that God helps us to be brave. We're brave, right? So in your take home pack, you got a Rocket sticker and you can use that to help you remember. God is always with you no matter what, and he will always help you even when you're facing a scary situation. No matter what, you're never alone because God helps us be brave. We're brave. God loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to be with us always. I wanna read you something about Jesus. I want you to, to put your hands on your hips like you're a superhero. Think, close your eyes and think about Jesus being right behind you as I read this. You know who often went against the crowd? Jesus, that's who. Some of Jesus's friends wouldn't talk with people who they didn't know. And they wouldn't talk with people who didn't choose God or know God's way. But Jesus would talk with anyone, no matter who they were or what they believed or what they'd done. He wanted everyone to know the truth about God. Others were afraid to hang out with sick people, but Jesus wasn't. When everyone else was walking away, he came over to help. Jesus did what was right, even if nobody else did. You can be like that too, but not on your own. You need Jesus's help to bravely stand against the crowd when everyone's picking on the new kid or laughing at the boy that stutters or pointing at that girl who looks different. Jesus will help you to know what's right and to do what's right too. Thanks, Jesus. All right, well, let's close with a prayer today, friends. Bow your, your head and pray with me. Faithful God, thank you for never letting us down. Thank you for always being true and trustworthy. Please help us learn that above all, we can trust you. Help us be brave with your strength and your truth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Have a great week, friends. See you next time.